And of course, whatever measurement device one uses, one will get the same result as quantum mechanics by the very same reciprocity argument that I gave earlier. Now, between the slits and the particle source, all the independent waves from all the different points will be traveling along the same path. In order that they act independently at the source, uh, somehow the source has to be able to distinguish between them. And the reverse wave theory says that each separate piece coming from a different part of the screen is going to carry a vector which is pointing in the same direction as a similar vector located in a particle in the screen. And those vector orientations are random over the surface of the screen. And only waves which have the same value of that vector pointing in the same direction will be able to interfere with one another and act together here at the source. So if you imagine uh, a single quantum wave state, single quantum state as described in current theory, the, the, a single quantum state between the source and the slits, in the reverse wave theory, that state is going to be divided up into many small pieces, each coming from a separate screen location. And the particle source then responds to each such piece almost exactly as it responds to the available state in current quantum field theory. In quantum theory, an available final state can be thought of as stimulating the emission of a particle into that state. Exactly the same thing happens with the reverse waves, except now that the wave moves in reverse. The, and also the intensity of the wave piece is only going to be one fraction of the overall wave state instead of the entire available state. The total probability of emission into the available state is going to be identical to that in current theory. It's just divided up into all the pieces. In fact, the, the mathematical expression for the emission is virtually identical to that in quantum field theory. Whatever, whatever expression one has for the quantum waves, it's going to be identical, but the wave's going the other way. Some, some e to the ikts are going to be e to the minus ikt, but the final expression is going to be identical, which is why you're going to get the same number of particles emitted. Yes. Space, yeah. not time, right? I mean, it certainly it takes time for these reverse waves to get to the source. Yes. So time is different here. It's non-local in time. No, it's local in time, but uh, the waves make their trip first. They're not going backwards in time. They're, they're actually physically emitted at B as real waves traveling in the reverse direction. It's not a time reverse wave. It's, it's just a wave. Right, right. But the, the observation is at a different time than the source emits. That's correct. That's correct. But, but there's, no, there's no backwards time causality right, applied right, there. But it is. Okay. Could, could you clarify, both of your waves still go with the velocity of light? The backward up. and forward waves, do they still both propagate with the velocity of light? Uh, the, the, yes or no? We'll, say that, uh, we'll see later that they propagate with the velocity of light. You, are you you're concerned about the um, frame invariance of the theory? Oh, I'll, I'll talk about that later. The theory as I presented so far clearly is not frame invariant. If you were to change to another frame uh, in which the particles move faster, the waves would have a lower frequency and they wouldn't correspond anymore. And I'll, I'll fix that later on. B received, A received the number wave from B already. Then, after that, before the forward wave from A to B come again, it shall close both shall no, there's, there's no forward wave in this theory, only the reverse wave. B to A, then, right. to B, right? And so both B to A receive, recorded. Then, before the A to B come to B, uh, again, you should close both holes. Oh, a time delay where you close both of them? Yes, before the A come back to B again, then what? Well, I'll talk later about such, uh, such time-delayed experiments. That's um, self-inconsistency. Um, I, I don't see why that would be inconsistent. So some final wave from B to A, suppose they, they part of the field come back to B, but it can't now. Well, it can't if you put something no, no, in between. No, I'm going to close both holes before they... In between. 
If, if you were to, after the particles emitted, if you were to block one of the slits... Uh, uh, a black hole, a black hole. Uh, both or whatever, then whatever you put there would stop the particle. Then the, you don't, you the way, in, in other words, as the particle travels, if you change something uh, here, hole. then that would now emit a reverse wave, and the particle would have to jump waves somewhere in between. I'll, I'll talk about that process later on. But after all, in current theory too, if after the particles emitted, you block the screen, well, the particle will be absorbed there and you, you won't see a diffraction pattern. So you, you're going to get the same, the same result as you'd get by a delayed choice experiment with quantum mechanics. I'll show later with Bell's theorem, even with delayed choice, you get exactly uh, a local explanation and the same result as quantum theory. Could you yeah. explain this interaction? Now, somehow the wave interacts with the particle. Well, it interacts with whatever is going on in the source here. Uh, it interacts with the source. Yeah. But it doesn't impart momentum, does it impart energy? No. Uh, think of the source as if it were, say, a, an ionization chamber with particles moving around. Um, you're going to get an emission when this reverse wave is in the same state as quantum field theory would say particles can be emitted into an available state in that direction. Yes, but interaction with quantum field theory uh, do involve exchange of energy and momentum. You're saying there's no exchange of energy and momentum? Not amongst the waves, no. So yeah. Between the wave and the, and, and the source? Well, quantum field theory says that the particle and the wave are the same thing, and these quantum waves do have a change no, of energy. about the interaction of the wave and the source. You're saying somehow or other this wave is magical in the sense that it's there and interacts, but it doesn't impart momentum or energy to anything. It stimulates the emission of secondary particles. By stimulation, so it interacts. It, it gives energy. All right, well, the, the reaction that results gives energy. Okay, but so you can imagine an electron, say, if this is an electron source, maybe it's moving in some, some diagonal direction, and there's also a photon wave involved, and this wave, too, and... The, the, the three waves, the wave being followed by the initial electron and the wave it follows afterwards and, pardon me, the wave it follows afterwards coming out and the photon wave, they're all there interacting ahead of time. It looks like a Feynman diagram. When a particle comes along, then the photon wave can stimulate a particle photon to be emitted and the particle electron then follows the final wave. So what's the source of the energy of this wave that then it imparts? In the wave itself has no energy as such. It just has a frequency, and uh, it, it's there all the time. It, it doesn't have to carry any energy to the particle. Pure information. I mean, I'll, I'll talk more about Feynman diagrams later and, and show how you reproduce the diagrams, their interactions. You'll get exactly the same expression. It, it's a new way of thinking about things here now. It's, it's, see, this is... I'll jump ahead a bit. This is going to end up being essentially a classical theory because these particles all interact as particles and they, they will exchange momentum and energy just like classical particles. The waves merely serve as the stimulants for the emission of the secondary particles. So you're going to have like a Feynman diagram of the fluxes and the particles are just going to follow that in reverse. They're characterized by a frequency but they don't actually push or pull. You see that the, the, the instant electron here is going to have a certain momentum already and that momentum is going to be conserved between it and the particle photon that's emitted and the particle electron that comes out. You don't need any additional momentum from the wave itself. Is, is, that, is that point not clear? So your wave from D to A only carries information, no energy. Is that right? Only information. Well, they, they carry whatever is necessary to interact with other waves. Information to direct the electron go to its origin place on the screen. Only carries, the wave from B to A only carries information, but no energy, no momentum. Is that correct? Uh, not really, no. It, it, you see, the waves all interact amongst themselves very much like described in current quantum theory. But they're not quantum waves. They don't turn into particles. So you're going to have a wave interaction that looks just like a Feynman diagram. Then a particle will come along following one of those reverse waves. And the other waves in the Feynman diagram will stimulate the emission of the appropriate additional particles. And you'll get what looks like a Feynman diagram among the particles. 